These were the words reported over the radio by the experienced Japanese pilot, Captain Kenju Karahuchi, from the cockpit of a JAL Boeing 747 on November 17, 1986. But this wasn't a desperate call for help. It was a calm, matter-of-fact statement about an extraordinary situation. This single declaration initiated one of the most intriguing and widely documented UFO incidents of the 20th century, the sighting reported by the crew of Japan Airlines cargo flight 1628. JAL 1628. Primary target behind you in trail. In trail. I say again. Can you see it? Hello and welcome to another episode from the UFO Database, your trusted hub for the exploration of unexplained aerial phenomena. We're a curious group of professionals from a broad range of backgrounds, united by our fascination with UFO incidents. Our aim is to approach these intriguing phenomena in an accessible, evidence-based manner, welcoming both skeptics and believers alike. So let's set the stage. We find ourselves aboard JAL Cargo Flight 1628. It's a routine commercial cargo flight piloted by Captain Kenju Karauchi, an ex-fighter pilot with an impressive portfolio of over 10,000 flight hours. His co-pilots for this journey are First Officer Takanori Tamofuji and Flight Engineer Yoshie Tsukuba. The craft, a powerful and reliable Boeing 747-200F, is loaded with a shipment of Beaujolais wine en route from Paris to Narita International Airport near Tokyo. The specific leg of the journey that draws our attention is the segment between Reykjavik, Iceland and Anchorage, Alaska. It was 5.11 p.m. local Alaskan time. A monotonous hum filled the cockpit as the cargo flight carved its path through the inky blackness of the Alaskan skies. Suddenly, two mysterious objects appeared on the left side of the aircraft. Through the cabin window, Captain Terauchi described them as having rectangular, thruster-like features. Their illumination, oscillating between hues of white and amber, contrasted against the dark skyline. Unsettled by the sight, Terauchi, along with his flight engineer Yoshia Tsukuba, examined these entities closely. They noted that these unidentified objects seemed to defy the conventions of known aircraft design at the time, lacking a set of wings, a tail, or any discernible fuselage. As these unidentified objects approached the aircraft, an unusually warm light began to flood the flight deck. Captain Terauchi, recalling this unique occurrence, remarked on feeling a wave of heat on his face. For a man who had traversed countless miles in the sky, this was an experience unlike any other. No sooner had the crew grappled with this spectacle than a third, colossal disc-shaped object came into view, trailing the cargo jet just as the first two objects vanished. Despite the flurry of communications with the Anchorage Air Traffic Control, their radar systems failed to confirm the presence of these objects. The situation turned stranger when a nearby United Airlines passenger flight failed to confirm the unidentified object. This perplexing rendezvous lasted a staggering 50 minutes, a duration unheard of in UFO sightings. As Captain Terauchi skillfully glided JAL 1628 out of a 360 degree turn, he was startled to spot the original pair of crafts below his altitude, approximately 2,000 feet beneath. These entities suddenly altered their formation, positioning themselves in front of the aircraft and exhibiting extraordinary agility that defied known aeronautical laws. Anchorage Air Traffic Control informed the crew that they couldn't visually confirm anything, but a brief primary return was detected on the radar shortly after the objects had receded, suggesting that something unusual was indeed in the vicinity. Now, given the situation's uniqueness, a proposal for military intervention was made. Captain Terauchi, however, declined, alluding to the unfortunate Mantel incident of 1948, 
where a pursuit of a UFO led to a tragic crash, costing Captain Thomas Mantell's life. After the chilling encounter, JAL 1628 and its shaken crew landed without any further incident at Anchorage International Airport at around 6.20 p.m. local time. It's important to note that this wasn't Captain Teruguchi's first encounter with unidentified aerial phenomena. Prior to the JDL 1628 incident, he had reported multiple UFO sightings, making him a somewhat controversial figure. And following this event, he was temporarily grounded by Japan Airlines due to his openness about the incident. The incident sparked fervid debates in both aviation and UFO communities. Captain Teruguchi took it upon himself to record the event providing detailed sketches and descriptions of the unusual objects that they had encountered. His notes, along with crew testimonies, were forwarded to Japan Airlines Regional Office in Anchorage. It was here, under the oversight of Senior Vice President Satura Fuji, that the company first initiated its internal investigation into the encounter. Yet, despite his wealth of aviation experience, Taraguchi's extraordinary encounter was met with skepticism by his superiors. The stigma associated with UFO reports, combined with the lack of concrete evidence, led to his grounding. Word of the encounter reached the FAA. John Callahan, then the Division Chief of the Accidents and Investigations Branch, took the initiative to launch a formal inquiry. The radar tapes from the evening of the encounter were pulled for review, and the FAA commenced on an investigation into the incident. The FAA's final report, published on March 5, 1987, proposed a less sensational explanation. The anomalous radar return detected by Anchorage Air Traffic Control was attributed to a split image phenomenon caused by a simultaneous radar reflection off the 747. According to the FAA, this could have created a false secondary return on their radar screens. This phenomenon can occur when a large aircraft such as a Boeing 747 reflects radar signals off its body producing secondary returns. However, this explanation has its own problems. For instance, split radar returns would usually appear near the aircraft generating them. In the JAL 1628 case, the anomalous returns were sometimes reported at considerable distances from the aircraft. While this explanation accounted for some of the radar anomalies, it didn't address the crew's physical sightings, leaving a significant portion of the incident unexplained. The FAA's findings, though rigorous, were met with widespread skepticism, leading to a proliferation of alternate theories. Some argued that it was a military cover-up, noting that the sightings occurred near Eielson Air Force Base, a key hub in the U.S.'s strategic defense setup, and others proposed that the crew might have just seen a secret aircraft undergoing testing, a theory bolstered by the fact that Alaska is near Soviet airspace, and this was during the Cold War. Following the public release of the FAA report, the incident attracted the attention of prominent UFO researcher and skeptic of the time, Philip J. Class. Known for his skeptical stance towards UFO sightings, wasted no time in dissecting the JAL 1628 incident. Class, an American journalist and senior editor of Aviation Week and Space Technology magazine, had long since established himself as a significant figure in the world of UFO debunking. As such, his interpretation was eagerly anticipated. Class proposed a prosaic explanation for the sighting. The crew had misidentified the planet Jupiter, which was unusually bright and clearly visible that night. To back up this assertion, Class cited independent astronomical software that confirmed Jupiter's visibility in the location and at the time of the sighting. Class's interpretation, while plausible, was not universally accepted. Critics pointed out that it failed to account for the radar returns and the duration and specifics of the sighting. Class's theories sparked heated debates, underscoring the continued intrigue around JAL 1628. Their perspectives, though divisive, played a significant role in shaping the public narrative around one of the most documented UFO sightings of the 20th century. The aftermath of this incident was characterized by disbelief, speculation, and controversy. In the weeks and months following the incident, it seemed to spawn more questions than answers. And despite the explanations put forth, the JAL 1628 incident remains a prominent case in the realm of UFO encounters. With its intriguing circumstances, expert witnesses, and lingering mystery, it continues to captivate UFO enthusiasts and skeptics alike.
As we conclude today's exploration of the JAL 1620 incident, remember our mission at the UFO database isn't about claiming definitive answers, but rather encouraging open-minded exploration. The phenomenon of UFOs is a broad and fascinating field, rich in historical events, personal encounters, and scientific challenges. It questions our understanding of reality and our place in the universe. So thanks for watching, and if you like this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Until next time, UFOs on the mind.